Hi, my name's Jacob Russell. If you're like most Americans, you probably own quite a few movies. If you're like me and have children, you probably have quite a few more than most of your friends. Space is a premium for families like mine, with the Americans trying to downsize and live in smaller homes for cheaper. I've been using a network attached storage device for quite a while for the exact reason. It allows me to store all of my content on one computer and share it seamlessly through all the TVs in the house. I'm using a piece of software called NAS for free. That's actually the operating system, and I'm using Subsonic. This is what allows me to do the streaming to the TVs and my phones. Now, let's go back a little bit. Let's talk about uh, families and size of your home. Um, most families these days, we own way too much stuff. It's, it's an American thing. We just own stuff. Uh, but DVDs, specifically, take up a lot of space with the plastic case itself um, being the majority of it. We're trying to protect that DVD. Now, in 2009, the average American, actually, uh, American family owned around 43 DVDs, and that's for the Nielsen Demographics uh, Company. In 2015, the BBC actually did a survey of British families and found that in 2015, these families owned somewhere around 90. That's more than double what Americans owned just, just a few years prior. So put that in perspective for a moment. 90 DVDs doesn't sound like a lot, but when you do the math on the size of the case, it actually works out to two cubic feet. That's two feet by two feet by two feet. That's quite a bit of space for 90 movies. And you're losing that on your bookshelves. Now, a hard drive in a computer is only three and a half inches by about three quarters of an inch by five and three quarters of an inch. It's pretty small. But you can get hard drives up to eight terabytes now. And an eight terabyte hard drive is actually gonna allow you to record or hold up to 1600 movies in full 1080p HD content at about five gigs per movie. That is an insane amount of movie storage because most people don't uh, copy their movies at such a high quality. I can probably double that or even triple that storage space for most people. Let's, let's think about that though, 1,600 movies. We're just gonna go on the minimum on the highest standard, 1,600 movies. Well, that would be about 36 cubic feet. 36 feet by 36 feet by 36 feet. Uh, or if you wanna think about it in bookshelf space, that would be 67 feet of bookshelf space. 67 feet. Think about the size of your living room. What would that would be an entire wall covered in movies, right? So that's, that's the, uh, the, the, the loss that you have in space. Uh, let's talk about why people don't have media servers. Most people don't have a media server because they're just intimidated by technology and don't think they can either get it or can't afford to buy one of the high-end units. But you don't need a lot. You need a decent computer. You need something that's maybe 2.4 gigahertz, uh, dual core, 64 bit. That's actually pretty outdated nowadays. You need two gigs of RAM at a bare minimum. Uh, I'd recommend upwards of 16 if you're gonna do a lot of storage. And you're gonna need some software. You're gonna need NAS for free, which we talked about earlier is free. Subsonic, also free. And PuTTY, so you could install Subsonic, also free. Uh, you will need to have a hard drive, and I recommend anywhere between a 2 to an 8 terabyte hard drive. Um, I run multiple 2 terabyte drives, and I'm doing just fine with what, with what I got. And they're very cheap at like $50 for 2 terabytes. So the space savings alone really should have you excited about maybe thinking about putting together a media server. Uh, let's jump in and get that media server going. I want you to follow my how-to. Uh, pause where you need to, because I did actually speed up the installation time uh, for the video time constraints. Every step that's necessary to install it onto a computer is in the video, okay? So what you'll do is you'll download NAS for free from nasforfree.org. We'll burn it to a CD, and as you see on the screen, we'll boot from that CD-ROM. Once we boot it again, this usually takes about two minutes, but I've cut out some time. You'll go ahead and you'll select the option 9 for install or update. Give it a moment. And when it's ready, make note of that web GUI address as well in red. So we'll go ahead and we'll choose 9, then we'll choose 3 to install. Enter again, enter again, press enter again. One more time to choose your size of your, uh, your hard drive, and then one more time to choose your swap size. You'll now see the installation screen, and it'll show you that it created partitions and it's installing the operating system. This will take approximately 2 minutes in real time. Hit enter on the um, finished screen, and then you're going to right arrow over to exit, type the number 7 and enter. And your server will reboot. While it's rebooting, you now have a server. Let's go ahead and pull 
the CD-ROM out of the uh, out of the CD-ROM drive while it's rebooting. When it comes back up, you're going to go to that red address 192.168.1.250, and you're going to log in with the username admin admin and the password NAS for free, just like you see on your screen. Excuse me. We're going to change some settings. We're going to go to System, and then we're going to go to General. And you're going to set an IP address for your DNS server. This is the name server. I use 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. That's Google, very reliable DNS name server. Then you're gonna to go to network and interface management and you need to put in your gateway. This is the name of your actual router, the IP address of it. Then we're gonna to go to disks and we're gonna to go to manage and we're gonna import all disks. The server then searches the drive or the, uh, the interface for hard drives and you're gonna click apply. Here you can see ADA1. This is our 16 gig drive we're gonna use for media today. You're gonna to go to disks mount now, this is how you attach a drive like the C drive. You're going to go disk. You're going to choose ADA1. Your mount point name is your actual hard drive name, not C, in this case, media. Click add. Click apply. There will be an error on my instance because the drive has actually been installed before. I click retry and it goes away. Now we're going to install activate the two services that are necessary to make this work. We're going to go to services and we're going to go SSH, secure shell. Enable in the top right corner. Then check where it says allow the root, which is the administrator of the server to connect to shell. This is a security setting. You can turn it off later. Apply settings and go to CIFS, so common internet uh, file share. We're gonna enable. Go to the bottom of the screen. We're gonna check box the uh, enable synchronous for faster transfers and allow clients to have null passwords. And then you're gonna change the name if you want to of your network share. This is what it shows up as, like as a Windows share file, um, your computer name. I changed it because I already have a NASA family network. Okay, now if we apply changes, we're gonna to go to shares, click the plus symbol, and in here, we're gonna create a share for that drive, media. Now, it's going to be in the mounts, so it's forward slash mount, forward slash media. And you'll see that here when we click the little dots to open up the folder window, there's our mounts, and then there's media, and then we click okay. And we click add, and we click apply. So now I have a computer named NAS for Free Demo that has one shared drive called Media. It's ready to reboot. Let's go ahead and reboot the server. Again, two minutes or so for rebooting. Time to get a beer, a cup of coffee, or anxiously hit the refresh button. Open up your uh, Explorer window in your Windows and go to Network and find your server. In this instance, NAS for Free Demo. There's my Media Drive. And now I'm going to drag in some music to go with my movies. Now that'll copy. While that's happening, we're going to go to Internet Explorer and download PuTTY. PuTTY's a free SSH client. You need that to connect to the server. So we go to PuTTY.org, click on the image or where it says you can download here, click on download it here, and you're going to click on the MSI file. I did it twice because apparently I was confused. Now, once the file is done downloading, you're going to run it. You see it downloading there in the bottom corner of the screen. In my instance, it says repair because I've already installed it. You'll click install and then install on the bottom of the screen. You have a putty icon, just like in the top right corner here of two monitors on your desktop. Go ahead and open putty and you're going to connect to the server 192.196.1.250. I'm sorry, 192.168.1.250, just like earlier. Say yes to the security warning. We don't care. And copy the first three, uh, three lines once we connect. Your login is going to be root and your password is going to be NAS for free. So now, out of the window in the background, you're going to copy out the th first three lines, which downloads the subsonic and installs all the apps. Right click, and it'll automatically paste. That's the way Putty's made to do it. Um, Putty's made to make simple changes. Copy the rest of the content, which makes the directories, copies settings, and then turns on subsonic. Now, in the uh, NAS for three window, we're going to go to System Advanced, Command Scripts, Click the plus symbol and we're going to paste that sh forward slash bar file right here and we're going to change type to post initialization which means after rebooting and you're going to click add this says turn on subsonic automatically subsonic is going to be at 192.168.1.250 your server address colon 4040 this is the web server address that way two things can run on one address you're going to log in with admin admin and once logged in you're going to go to the top left corner after you've cleared out this error message you're going to go to the top left corner and you're going to click the three little dots see them load in a second little lines these are for settings 
So go ahead and click those. Go to settings. And we're going to set the folders for where our media is. Now, it's not bar music. That's a default setting. It's going to be forward slash mount, MNT, forward slash media, forward slash music. Just like I said earlier, mount is where drives are. Media is the name. It's the C drive. And then media or uh, music is where your music is. We'll do the same thing for movies. Movies, forward slash mount, forward slash media, forward slash movies. Scroll to the bottom and save. We make sure there's no errors on the right hand side and we scan after you click scan you'll see it's scanning all my media this goes really quick because there's only a couple movies in one cd go to index and there's our movies in our cd we installed let's go to frozen and let's check out how to build the snowman it's just that simple you click play on it right there on the screen and after just a couple of seconds it starts screaming across the network a movie that you can watch on a browser just like that you're actually able to share content on your web browser in your house. There's a free app that lets you go ahead and do the exact same thing on your phone and tablet. So we go over to Index again. Let's check out Death Punch. We went to Got Your Six. We click Play All, and you'll see on the bottom it starts playing. You can see the pause button, and it's playing. Just like that, you're sharing media from one computer to another in your house as if uh, somebody had built it for you or you bought it on the Internet. So... If you follow my instructions, you now have a free, easy to use, and almost free media server. I hope you enjoy it, and you can share your media everywhere you go. Hack the planet, and thanks for watching.